Also, I wanted to make another quick video for you, um, because some of my followers, at least in the past, were people with social anxiety disorder, and I still, oh joy, have social anxiety disorder, which is probably disappointing for you, to, for most of you to hear, but you know, it's a snail pace kind of growth, and when you have all, all this chaos in your life, it's very hard to work on yourself. My first recommendation is to stabilize your life. I had a marriage where things were always going wrong. I was always, be, always being misled and disappointed. Um, just kind of like, oh yeah, I'll meet you for this, I'll do this for you. And then it wouldn't happen at all, and then they get upset at me. So um, that kind of stuff happens. And sorry, I'm getting distracted. Okay, um, so, so that kind of stuff happens. And all this chaos can come in your life. And it's really important to stabilize that chaos so you have time to work on yourself at all. Because if you have all this other shit outside your life ruining things, then it becomes the ultimate distraction and it never ends. And then how in the world do you work on yourself? So first of all, to the best of your control, because you have to accept the things you can't control and just work slowly towards the better things, in your control, make choices and that reflect what's best for you. My second recommendation, um, I've been in therapy now for a while, over a year or two with a new, no, not two, over a year with a new therapist. She's really nice and good and um, really offers concrete homework and um, mood charts and things that feel m more productive. Because if I could think my way out of anxiety, I would have been done for years now. I've thought about every angle. Thinking doesn't help. You have to do it through some sort of action. And it doesn't have to be that you shove yourself necessarily into things that terrify you so much as you take gradual steps like that and really it's how you handle the things that happen in your life already. So the most important thing that chips away slowly at it, the second recommendation, is to work on your self-talk. And I frankly found it really stressful and stupid sounding to work on self-talk because it's like what the hell am I going to do? Think happy thoughts all day? I mean, it's like, um, how is this going to work? And really, um, it's the fine art of arguing with yourself. You need to argue with yourself, and usually a therapist can kind of help you with the baseline of this. Um, basically, it's really important because oftentimes you can have really distorted ideas of the world and yourself and your relation to the world. So having a friend or a therapist or someone who can say, that doesn't make any damn sense the way you're thinking about it, in a nice way, um, helps you reevaluate your world. My therapist calls it um, a story. I believe a certain story and I'm living by a certain story that I don't have to live by. But what this means is my story is that the world is judgmental, I have to be careful, I have to be liked by everyone, and that's a story I've been taught by my family and the world around me and my experiences. But the thing is, this is just a story. One story in a pool of stories, millions of stories. Everyone sees the life differently and the world differently, so why should I be chained down to this version of living? So the point is to argue with yourself and to have these kind of uh, distortions you have questioned. So for instance, mm, I get anxiety over making friends because I think, oh, I'm gonna disappoint anyone I meet because I have periods of time when I need to be alone. Months even, like I'll make a friend or someone and I'll get too bogged down emotionally or just feeling unwell in some way or another and I'll really just not want to talk to anyone for months and I feel like shit because of it. And so I decided to myself, oh, I can't have friends because I don't deserve friends because no one can like me that way. And what my therapist was saying was that basically, that is me telling myself something that I've taught myself, a story. The story is that I have to protect others, and I have to watch out for all the feelings other people have, and I have to make sure all my conduct is always perfect, and everything I do has a positive impact on people. And that is a story, and a story you can call bullshit. <laughs> the story you can replace that with is, it's not my problem. It's not my problem how other people feel, I'm doing good things, I'm trying to be a good person, but I have to be who I am inside. And you have to be true to yourself, even if you're not perfect, even if it's embarrassing or hard and you have to admit, I can't handle this, and you are where you're at. 
and you let the other people decide what to do about that instead of predicting what they're gonna do and trying to be all apologetic all the time like I'm so sorry for existing and being the way I am that's how I used to live my life and how I what I'm trying to fight against is the idea that I have to apologize for everything I do that's that way like I have to apologize for having to cancel or for having to spend a few months alone you don't have to apologize it's who you are if it's who you are then, and where you're at now, you shouldn't apologize for it because it's okay to disappoint people and that's something that was really important for me to learn is it's extremely key to disappoint people because if you can't disappoint people, you're always going to be living for other people and you're going to be really miserable and it will fuel the hell out of social anxiety. So, self-talk. I thought, I can't have friends, you know, my self-talk is, why should that be? I can have friends if I want to and I can try and make friends and if they don't like me, that just means they don't work with me. And if they don't like me and don't work with me, they can go away. I don't have to be worried about it or try and predict or try and figure out how they actually feel about me. If they don't like me, they don't have to say yes to invitations. If they don't like me and can't handle the fact that I'm gone for a month or two, then they can leave. It's not my problem. And that takes a huge weight off my shoulders because no longer am I saying, oh hey, I have to be afraid all the time of my impact. You're saying, no, I am only going to think about my side of the story. And that's something my therapist said is most draining for me, is my mind is constantly going for the other person's moves and my moves, like playing chess for two people, and you get freaking tired after a while, and you get emotionally exhausted, and which is why I don't like to socialize, is because I've been living my life thinking, I really need to be careful and think of how this other person's feeling because I'm a kind person and I don't want to hurt anyone. Well, news is that's a horrible idea. <laughs> it's a terrible idea, but it's so painful and guilty to let go of that idea. And so it's something I'm facing and continuing to face is, I don't have to feel pain over this. I don't have to live this way. People can be honest with me and if they're not honest, that's their own fault and it's not my fault. And that's something you have to accept, is how you interact with people. You can only think of your own side. And you don't have to feel horrible about yourself if things don't work. Because there's always someone out there who will work with you, be it a close friend, a relationship, anything. And so you don't have to feel horrible, because there are so many people out there, and so many varieties of people out there, and just everyone's so different and everyone has different standards of living and existing some people are over workaholics and think all their existence has to be on their career success some people enjoy to have a low-key life with very few possessions everyone lives, lives differently and has different values so of course some people aren't gonna like you but that's okay and that's something that I recommend trying to absorb and learning to argue with yourself when you make a mistake in public and you're embarrassed you say no lots of people make mistakes I'm not required to be perfect. This is a counter with a sign. People walk on the wrong side. You shouldn't get freaked out about that because everyone makes mistakes. And who knows how many people have made the same mistake you have. And do you have to feel bad about it? No. I don't have to feel bad about it. Because it doesn't have a huge impact on people when I make a mistake like that. And so you say to yourself, do you really think that person working there is laughing at you when they probably have hundreds of people a day Lots of people making stupid little mistakes, dropping things, forgetting to pay properly. There's lots of things people do. And so learning to dial down the intensity of that is really important. So argue with yourself. Slowly argue and break down this idea you've created. And you say, no, that's not realistic at all. And so that's the first video I'll make.